soaring through the ill-lit night skies during the final stages of World War II was an aircraft which moved like nothing ever seen before. This aircraft was so terrifyingly stealthy that one was nicknamed the Lady of the Dark after scoring what was the final Allied forces victory of the war. The aircraft under the spotlight is the Northrop P-61 Black Widow, the first US night fighter, which by the end of the war was responsible for the fall of 127 enemies who never saw it coming. Stay tuned to find out how this aircraft became a World War II menace. Before we find out what marvels the Northrop P-61 Black Widow was responsible for during the Second World War, we need to first go through its history to learn why it was built in the first place. Massive developments had been made to warfare technology over the decades between the world wars. However, one aspect which hadn't really seen significant advancement, especially in the race for air superiority, was night fighting aircraft. At the start of World War II, both attackers and defenders mostly had to fly in daytime, as that was when pilots were able to spot other aircraft from miles away and protect each other by flying in close formations. Nighttime fighting, on the other hand, was a literal nightmare. There were legitimate risks of collision and friendly fire, and this forced night fighter crews to fly a single aircraft without wingmen, which was a potential death mission if the enemies were alert. In those early days of the war, the British had been working to develop their radar capabilities, which had already helped them against the German forces Luftwaffe HE-111 bombers during the Battle of Britain in 1940. However, what they seriously needed was a high-altitude, high-speed aircraft to intercept the Luftwaffe bombers attacking London at night or during periods of poor visibility. The British government wanted an aircraft that could patrol continuously over the city throughout the night, requiring at least an eight-hour loiter capability. The aircraft would also have to carry one of their considerably heavy AI radar units and mount its specified armament in multiple gun turrets. The requirements for this new fighter jet were conveyed to all of the aircraft designers and manufacturers the British government were working with, which included Warcraft manufacturing behemoths Lockheed and Douglas. Also on the list was Jack Northrop, who despite having fewer resources, realized that the speed, altitude, load carrying capacity and multiple turret requirements demanded a large aircraft with multiple engines. Luckily for Northrop, both Lockheed and Douglas were already preoccupied with projects, so despite its fewer resources, its design was accepted in late 1940. It was awarded a contract to produce two prototypes and two scale models in January 1941, after its proposal was preferred to Douglas's XA-26A night fighter. At that point, the US hadn't directly entered into World War II combat, but its weapons manufacturers were active at supplying weapons to Allied forces. However, all of this was about to change, and the new aircraft from Northrop would end up playing a huge role for them and their British allies. The United States only officially entered into World War II on the 8th of December 1941, following a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor by Japan a day earlier. At this time, the aircraft being designed by Northrop was still facing issues with its development, and their design plans even had to change a few times. By that time, the British War Department had designated the aircraft as the XP-61. Over the following year, modifications continued to be made to the XP-61, but Northrop's other high-priority projects, such as the XB-35 all-wing bomber, were proving to be something of a distraction to its engineering team. And World War II was going into its fourth year without the British having their night fighter. In 1944, after over three years of development and various troubled test flights for the P-61A and P-61B prototypes, the Northrop XP-61 night fighter was finally ready for operational use. Before then, a member of one of the teams working on the aircraft had seen a prototype painted shiny gloss black with red serial numbers and inspection door markings and decided to name the aircraft Black Widow. Despite the time it took for the Black Widow to be ready for operation, the British forces were still unsure of what aircraft to use for nighttime combat, as by that time they also had the de Havilland Mosquito. The two aircraft were put to the test in an evaluation to decide which would come out on top. 
On the 5th of July 1944, a fly-off happened between a pilot flying a P-61 Black Widow and another pilot flying a night fighter version of the Mosquito called the NF-17. At the end, the Black Widow proved to be the faster aircraft and more maneuverable at all altitudes. It also surpassed the Mosquito in rate of climb by a considerable margin. With that victory, the Black Widow could no longer be ignored and, only 11 days later, on the 16th of July 1944, the Black Widow scored its first aerial crewed victory in Europe when pilot Hermann Ernst and radar operator Edward Kopsel shot down a V-1 buzz bomb. This set the tone for what the Black Widow was going to bring to the World War II battlefield, culminating in a set of victories which included the destruction of 18 robot V-1 buzz bombs. But more significantly, it was responsible for knocking down 127 enemy aircraft, the last of which secured a historic victory for the Allied forces on the final day of the war. Before we get into the story of the Black Widow's historic victory on the final day of World War II, as well as what happened afterwards, let us first learn about the features of the aircraft which made it basically untouchable in its relatively short World War II run. In the early stages of its design process, US Army Air Force's leadership had envisioned the Black Widow interdicting ground targets with the goal to disturb or terrorize enemy forces at night as well as in daylight. And terrorize is what it did. At nearly 50 feet in length, with a wingspan of 66 feet, the Northrop P-61 Black Widow was supersized for its time. It could carry up to three crew members, which consisted of the pilot, the radar operator, and an optional gunner. With a gross weight of nearly 13 and a half tons, the massive airframe of the Black Widow needed to be propelled by a powerful engine. Northrop selected two 2,250 horsepower Pratt & Whitney R2865 W Double Wasp 18-cylinder air-cooled radial piston engines to perform the task. The Black Widow was able to achieve a top speed of around 318 knots or 366 miles per hour at a ceiling of 20,000 feet. Its range of 1,170 nautical miles and ferry range of 1,700 nautical miles was enough to conduct attacks from British shores on enemies across Europe's hotbeds. Its rate of climb of just over 2,500 feet per minute meant it could get off the ground before most enemy devices could spot it. The Black Widow sported a unique twin boom design which not only enhanced stability and control, but provided each crew member with an unobstructed view of outside the airplane. The pilot and gunner were able to see forward well enough allowing the night fighter to close in on adversaries to make a positive identification before attacking. A clear bubble canopy, which was fitted to the back end of the nacelle, also allowed the radar operator to scan for targets behind the aircraft. The Black Widow came with a turret fire control system, which allowed any of the three crew members to control the turret if they spotted a target. It was also armed with machine guns, cannons, bombs and rockets, allowing P-61 crews to lay down devastating fire on enemy forces. By December 1944, the 425th Night Fighter Squadron had begun using 5-inch diameter high-velocity aerial rockets to attack trucks, trains and other vital enemy structures. The SCR-720A search radar, with a detection range of about 16 miles, was initially mounted in the nose of the first Black Widow variant, the P-61A, before it was upgraded to a radar set called the SCR-720C on the P-61B after flight crews considered its capability to be barely adequate in combat. Additionally, to complement the pilot's standard N6 gun sight, Northrop introduced night binoculars to gather as much light as possible and to help the pilot judge how far away targets were. These features made the Northrop P-61 Black Widow nearly unstoppable especially in poorly lit situations, and despite its late entry into the war, it ended up with dozens of victories on the battlefront as it became a menace to enemy ships and aircraft. Let's explore a couple of those victories. By mid-1944, three P-61 Black Widow squadrons had been operating in the Pacific Theatre, and their first kill was scored on the 30th of June that year, when a Black Widow of the 6th Night Fighter Squadron shot down a Mitsubishi G-4M bomber belonging to the Japanese. During that period, the Japanese were unable to face up to American air superiority during the daytime 
and resorted to nighttime attacks using raiders. However, once the Black Widow entered into service, the Japanese raiders increasingly failed to make it back home. Black Widows flew missions all over the Pacific, and with their heavy armament, they could usually kill spotted targets pretty quickly. As the Japanese night raids began to wane to basically nothing, the Black Widows were increasingly used in ground attack roles, using cannons as well as napalm bombs and rockets for attacks. Additionally, the Black Widows moved to France as Allied forces penetrated deeper into Europe. But with the Luftwaffe running out of fuel, they didn't have a lot of opportunity to score aerial kills, and so they were kept busy in the night ground attack role. Despite knocking down dozens of aircraft and V-1 bombs in its short stint fighting for the Allied forces in World War II, the biggest, or better still, the most historic victory for the P-61 Black Widow would come on the 14th of August, 1945. On the day of the Japanese government's surrender, a P-61 squadron downed a Japanese Nakajima Ki-44 Tojo fighter interceptor and unofficially became the Allied forces' final victory of the war. However, despite the successes which it achieved for the Allied forces, the Northrop P-61 Black Widow never really got going due to a few challenges which it faced, and its fate as a historic aircraft following the war was significantly affected by this. Let's explore how. In total, around 200 P-61As and over 500 P-61Bs were manufactured by Northrop and used by the US Air Force, with around a dozen operated by the US Marine Corps as the F-2T-1N. However, the biggest issue was the supply of spares and replacement aircraft. Northrop never seemed to be able to supply sufficient replacement aircraft or parts, which sometimes led to the grounding of P-61s in some squadrons. On one occasion, the US 422nd Night Fighter Squadron received just one replacement aircraft and a few spares in five months of combat operations. This meant that the squadron was only able to muster four operational aircraft during the Battle of the Bulge, when bad weather meant that night fighters were basically the only Allied aircraft able to fly. Furthermore, there were no real foreign users of the Black Widows, and even the ones captured by the Chinese forces after the war barely saw any flight service. Some US Marine air crew did fly in US Air Force Black Widows in Europe to get experience in night fighter operations, and the US Navy did plan to obtain the aircraft for use by the Marines off of land bases. However, it decided instead to acquire the carrier-capable Grumman F-7F Tiger Cat as its selected night fighter. The dozen P-61Bs under the designation of F-2T-1N which were obtained by the US Marine Corps for use as radar trainers for Tiger Cat aircrew, were also withdrawn from service shortly after the war in 1947. However, this didn't signal the end for the aircraft. Two day fighter versions of the Black Widow were converted to what was called the XP-61E Long Range Escort Fighter configuration, with the major change being the complete redesign of the central fuselage to a more streamlined form with a tandem seat bubble canopy. The third crew position being eliminated and increased fuel tankage replacing it. However, the need for a new long-range escort fighter waned shortly after the program was initiated, and so the development of the XP-61E was conducted on a low-priority basis, with the first prototype not being completed until March 1945. Despite the decent performance of the XP-61Es, the newly arrived North American P-82 twin Mustang had a much more impressive performance, and so the XP-61E effort was eventually abandoned. However, that didn't spell the end of the development, and in the summer of 1945, the surviving XP-61E was modified to an unarmed photo-reconnaissance configuration called the XF-15, which had its initial flight on the 3rd of July, 1945. The P-61 Black Widow itself remained in service for a few years after the war, before being replaced by the F-82F Twin Mustang, which itself was also quickly replaced with the Northrop F-89 Scorpion. Some Black Widows were used for various test exercises, including test launches of various missiles and drones, as well as ejection seat trials. Between 1946 and 1947, a number of P-61 Black Widows, with armament removed, 
were employed in the US Weather Service's Project Thunderstorm, which aimed to research violent weather. They were flown into thunderstorms and were often struck by lightning, sometimes even suffering damage from hail. But no aircraft were lost. Today, there are no Black Widows remaining in service, but a few still survive as static displays. The development of the Black Widow was a vital moment in aviation history. Its creation led to the birth of a completely new class of aircraft where spotting and attacking enemy aircraft was no longer a matter of how good the eyesight of the pilot was. Following the development and success of the Black Widow, virtually every interceptor produced around the world had some level of all-weather capability, and it's hard to argue its influence in that. What do you think of the Black Widow and its exploits? Share your opinions in the comments below.